we know that Timothy was a person in whom the Apostle Paul had a great deal of confidence. We, he, we have been taught that he was probably in his 40s or so um, when Paul wrote him. So he had been a co-laborer with him for a long time at this point. And it says in uh, 1 Timothy 6, in verse 12, if you look with me there, he says, fight the good fight of faith. Then he says, take hold of the eternal life to which you are called when, and you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And it's interesting to consider that. Why would Paul tell Timothy, who's been co-laboring with him for you know 20 years, take hold of eternal life? You think if anybody's got it, he's got it. Yeah, you know, it, it, in, the, in the superficial meaning of that expression. But we know from John chapter 17 that what the Lord said, I'm going to look there, define eternal life in John chapter 17 and verse 3. Jesus said, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So you can take, we could take Paul's letter to Timothy and say, take hold of knowing God to the extent to which he wants you to take hold of the opportunity to know Jesus Christ to the maximum extent possible. And there, as I think about it like that, I start to understand what he's saying. It's not, you think you know him, you have to know him more. You must know him more. Take hold of knowing Jesus. And I think that's, I wanted to say to you, my brothers, I think that has to continue to be the driving ambition and longing of our lives, that we keep wanting to come to know Jesus more, and that we'd be willing to hear exhortations like what Paul tells Timothy. I don't think Timothy rolled his eyes when he got this letter, but there's a part of us that could imagine, what do you mean? You know, like, like he says, you know, um, uh, he warns him about, you know, sexual immorality. He go, you know, there, there's a part of us that goes, do I need these basic warnings? Take hold of eternal life. But I think that Timothy must have really cherished these warnings. And we do well, likewise, to, to cherish these warnings. We have to know Jesus more. Paul said in Philippians 3, I count everything as rubbish in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I Nothing matters other than knowing Jesus Christ. And it's in this connection that I wanted to mention that everything that the Lord appoints in our lives is, in, he's intended to allow it to enable us to come into fellowship with Jesus and to come to know him more, every part of our lives. And I, um, I'm saying this to myself, by the way, because I'm in a very uh, challenging season um, in my life, and I feel it's important to remember, and as I felt the Lord reminding me, I wanted just to share what he's reminding me of, which is all of these circumstances are appointed that I might be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And how am I conformed to his likeness? It's as I come to know him, and I come to share in the fellowship of his sufferings, and I come to partake of the resurrection life as I take up my cross. And everything that Jesus went through, he went through um, in order to enter into fellowship with me. And, you know, it says at the end of the book of John that, you know, if the whole earth, or, you know, if all that was written in Jesus' life was written down in books, you know, the whole earth couldn't contain it. Or maybe just so I don't botch that verse, we can look at it, but it's uh, John 21, 25. There are also many things which Jesus did, which if they were written in detail, I suppose that even the world itself wouldn't contain the books that would be written. And I heard Brother Zach say once, you know, Jesus' ministry is fairly well covered across the four Gospels. But that what that verse speaks of is the 30 years that he lived, the hidden years of his life in Nazareth, working humbly as a carpenter, being the eldest man in the household, uh, providing for a family of many people. If all that Jesus did were written in detail, it's not just referring to, you know, miraculous ministry, but the life that he lived. And 
why did he why did he live that life a life you think about what are the things that jesus went through what kinds of crushings and challenges and pressing situations must he have gone through for john to be inspired by the holy spirit to say that if you had any idea what he went through in his life the whole world couldn't contain the books think of all of the things he went through why did he go through them he went through them it says so that he would be a faithful high priest to us that's what it says in hebrews chapter 2 if you want to turn there and it's so important to see that jesus um it says in verse 10, it was fitting, uh, sorry, Hebrews 2, verse 10, it was fitting for him for whom are all things and through whom are all things and bringing many sons to glory to perfect the author of their salvation through sufferings. And then it goes on to say, look at verse 16 with me, or sorry, verse um, 14 even. Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself, Jesus, partook of the same through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death that is the devil and he might free those who through death uh, through the fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives for and i love this verse verse 16 assuredly he does not give help to angels god doesn't help angels jesus isn't interested in helping angels but he gives help to the descendant of abraham or to the sons of men therefore we could say for this reason what reason because he longs to give us help. For this reason, he had to be made like his brethren in all things, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. And it says in verse 18, because he was tempted in that which he suffered, he's able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. And what we can take from that very simply is everything Jesus went through was intended to make him sympathetic to me, was intended to make him approachable to me, was intended to make him merciful to me and everything that i'm going through is meant to make me approach jesus and to find sympathy with him and to find help from him he had to be made like his brethren so that he could give help everything he went through in his life why did he do it because he longed to give me faithful sympathetic help what a shame if in all the circumstances in my life i'm not seeking them or I'm not seeking that help. And what a shame if I'm just seeking for the storm to pass, but I'm not interested in having fellowship with him. What a shame if I'm just looking for the problem to be fixed, but I'm not partaking of his life. What I want is for the Holy Spirit to disclose Jesus Christ to me. That's what Jesus said if you turn to John chapter 16. Jesus, when he was speaking of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father had yet to send in John chapter 16 and verse 14, he says, he will glorify me for he will take of mine and he will disclose it to you. He wants, and what we know that, that he's referring to there is he wants to tell you all about my life. He wants to show you the things that I went through and show you how I can be sympathetic to your needs and show you how I'm approachable and show you, remind you how much I want to help you. And we have to seek for the Holy Spirit to uh, to reveal Jesus to us in this way. And when Paul says to Timothy, take hold of eternal life, when he says, take hold of knowing Jesus, part of what he's meaning is in the very little circumstances that nobody ever is going to write a book about. In those little circumstances, seek to draw near to and partake of the life of one who people should have wrote a book about, who if they had written the book, it, he went through so many things the whole earth couldn't contain it. And why did he do it? Because he wanted to help. Because he wanted to be a faithful high priest. And it's this Jesus that we need to approach. It's this Jesus that we need to long to know better. We need to be able to say like Paul, it can be theology now, that's fine, but it's got to become our testimony. I too have counted all things lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus as Lord. What does that mean in part? I mean, it, it's so much. We can't, we could never have enough teaching on just that one verse, but I've counted all things. You know what? Things aren't going the way I want them to, but rather than moan about it, rather than try to change it, I've counted all things lost. It's not even worth bothering. Why? Because there's a surpassing value 
of knowing Christ Jesus in his suffering, in the crushing, in the breaking. I count it as loss. I, I don't want to have it change. I don't want to have the circumstance change. I want to know Jesus Christ more. I want to have fellowship with him. That is a mindset that we have to be renewed in. I find for me, I have to be renewed in the mindset. Jesus wants me to know him. And the way he invites me to know him is different than, it's not Bible study. It's not, you know, all these things that we are prone to think it is. It's drawing near to him, drawing strength from him, seeking his fellowship and nearness. In the middle of the challenging circumstance, asking the Holy Spirit, take from him and reveal him to me. How would Jesus conduct himself in this situation? You have to show me, Lord, Holy Spirit. You have to show me the life of Jesus here. That's what it means to take hold of eternal life again and again and again. Take hold, take hold. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. We have to be renewed in our passion for this to be the case in our lives. And the pressures and distractions and priorities and all sorts of things in our lives are going to continue to try to just gnaw away at our resolve, you know, and, and we're going to be distracted. That's why we have to fight the good fight of faith. That's why these meetings are so important when we come together and we say, uh, let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. So when we hear testimonies like we've heard tonight, it stirs us all up. I want to know Jesus like that. I want him to help me like that. I want him to remind me of his word like that. You know, that's the experience I've had tonight as I listen to you brothers. I go, that I want that when I'm disciplining my kids or when I'm dealing with that challenging morning at work and I want to do over, I want that, right? And it's an incredible privilege. We have to be stewards of the manifold grace of God when we come together in the church meeting, that we're stewards of his willingness to come onto the scene again. He, he humbled himself for a little while. He humbled himself lower the angels and he's, willing by the by the revelation of the Holy Spirit to humble himself uh, each time we come to him and, and reveal himself to us. And we have to keep fighting to take hold of that eternal life. And um, I don't relish it enough. I'll be honest, I don't. And so as I said in the, uh, I don't know if it was the beginning or earlier, I'm saying this to remind myself, and I'm saying this, uh, it's what I want. And I believe that it's what the Lord wants for me and for all of us that more and more we'd be less and less interested in, you know, like Jesus said, John 12, what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. It's for this purpose. You sent me this hour. Father, glorify your name. That more and more, that would be the testimony of every situation. What shall I, am I praying I'd be delivered from this hour? No, glorify your name, Lord. You're sovereign, you're almighty, you're perfectly loving and powerful and wise. And if you brought me to this situation, Lord, hallowed be thy name. And um, I'm not there yet, but I see clearly that that's the eternal life that the Lord wants us to take hold of, that we would be conformed to Jesus in everything. And um, he who promised is faithful. And we can grow strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that, as it says in Romans 4, as we looked at earlier, he who promised is faithful. This is the life that we want to, to be living. And uh, I'm encouraged by glimpses of that in each of your lives as you shared your testimonies. And I want, I want to give glimpses of it too. And uh, so I pray that the Lord would help us renew our determination to take hold of eternal life.